What's you know, your natural thinking style, do you find? Do you find you're quite robust in your thinking or if you go into a low mood, what is your sort of natural thinking style? If something happens, like there's a challenge that happens. Thank you for the hearts, everybody. Um, it depends how stressful it is, I guess. If, yes. if it makes me very anxious, then my logical thinking goes out the window, I guess. Yeah, which is quite um, natural. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, what I wanted to share today mm -hmm. is there is a particular thinking style that's really worth noting. And lots of my clients have ended up putting this particular thinking style on their computer to remind themselves if they've fallen into it. But the thinking style is what's called the three P's. Right. And this is when you make something personal, permanent mm -hmm. and pervasive. So mm -hmm. say you lose your job or a relationship ends, you apply this to the personal part, this always happens to me. This is over every area of my life and this is never gonna change. So rather mm -hmm. than a challenge happening, which many of us will be challenged right now, yeah. rather than thinking it's just contained to one area of your life, what tends to happen with this thinking style is it overflows to every area of your life. Does that make sense? And it yeah. tends to be someone who struggles with low self-esteem, so it's an inherent um, belief they don't have any worthiness, will tend to gravitate towards this particular thinking style and make it all about them. So rather than thinking, I've lost my job, the leadership wasn't great. Um, there were aspects that were not my fault. They become overly responsible. Now, and then of course, when it's applied to, I'm never going to work again, or this always happens to me, um, I'm never going to be happy again. So it, it encompasses the whole area of their life. And it can really lock down any emotional flexibility that's required in order to move on. Yeah. So what can be really helpful is to put down the three Ps, personal, mm -hmm. permanent, and pervasive, and stick it on your computer. And if you find yourself in this sort of lockdown, rigid style of thinking, you yeah. can look at that piece of paper and say, okay, am I making this all personal? Am I making this all pervasive? And am I making it all permanent? Because we can slip into it without realising. Does this make sense? Yeah, yeah. Sense? Is, this, is this a habit that somebody would have from a young age? Is it a, a trait in somebody's personality that can be formed when they're younger? And then totally. it just carries on through life? Totally. Because in another live we were doing, I was saying that, you know, my mum was quite a sort of depressive style of yeah. personality. You know, she really struggled with depression. Yeah. She didn't, her, so her reaction to challenges were very much sort of, she would catastrophize. Yeah. Um, and the language she would use would be sort of uh, very dramatic. And so that thinking style can definitely so be learned. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's it's familiar. Actually, somebody's just actually asked about catastrophic thinking, how to deal with it. So yeah, how so deal so with it? Exactly this. So, yeah. So the three P's is a great way of dealing with catastrophic thinking because when we're in catastrophic thinking or in high emotion, remember in the other lives, I've said the biggest thing is to learn to calm yourself down, right? Yeah. Then when you are reminded of those thinking styles, so you can see it, that's why I say when you have a plan to come back to, so when you're in a state of high emotion, you have mm -hmm. a plan to work towards, this is what we're trying to do here is to teach things that you can put down after these lives and, and go back to when in this state of high emotion, right? Yeah. If you if you were in a catastrophic style of thinking, you can look, well, am I making this all permanent? Am I making it all pervasive? Am I making it all um, personal? And what out, what other ways could I think about this? Um, you know, and watch yourself. Okay. You know, I can't, I, if you say to yourself something like, I'm catastrophized, I can't bear this anymore. You could say, I reached, I've reached a point where I want to make changes. Okay. You know, so it's like reframe the way you are saying something to yourself yeah. and the way you are viewing it. You know, I will never get over this. It's painful right now. And, and what, this can change. Um, and what if you see a friend and hear a friend saying these things? Well, I think the biggest thing with friends is that is to learn to listen without trying to necessarily solve their problem. Because the biggest thing when people are in a really challenge space and they are anxious or depressed is they don't necessarily you know our temptation is to jump in and try and fix it right yeah but the biggest thing is to listen actively and to understand to make them help them realize you understand or yeah. can empathize with how they feel so something like that sounds like it's been really tough for you at the moment note the pause and at the moment so you're adding in um a temporary 
factor to what's happening mm -hmm. to them. Does this make sense? So when someone okay. feels understood and yeah. you can reflect back how they feel, the emotional content, if you like, of how they're feeling, their experience, then that tends to help them relax. And often I'll have someone come into a therapy room with me and they might be in a very high state of emotion and just the sheer act of listening and saying, that sounds really tough, you know, um, and, and adding this temporary factor to it can actually calm the nervous system. Also, they that's feel seen and heard, right? So that's, a, that's a sort of helpful way, I think, of, of, of being there for friends, for listening yeah. actively. Um, so someone just says, yes, I can't help myself sometimes. I went to a few sister circles and it was such a helpful experience to appreciate how powerful just being listened to felt. Sometimes that's enough. Oh my gosh, that is so right, Colleen. Sometimes that is enough. Yeah. But naturally, especially if you're someone that loves to fix problems for people, and if you love someone, right, you want to help them. Exactly. And this happen with kids a lot. Anyone who's got kids, teens, yeah. you suddenly want well, I, mean, I see myself doing it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I want to solve it for them. But it's people have to learn their own way of doing things, but actively listening so someone can feel seen and heard can help the nervous system yeah. regulate. Um, and it can be incredibly therapeutic. And um, Lee, can you explain the three Ps to the pe to the person as well, to the friend or your family member? At the right time, you could. But it's what can be helpful, actually, is to say something along the lines of, you know, actually, a friend of mine was talking to me the other day about this thinking style, which I thought was kind of interesting. It was called the three Ps. So you're not yeah. directing it at the person. Okay. So that's why storytelling is very powerful. Yeah. So if instance, a teen is going through something or a friend is going through something, you know, a friend of mine that went through something similar to this and they did this, that and the other. It was quite interesting. So you're not saying you should do this, that or the other. OK, that's you're really saying, good. Yeah. This is what I heard. It was quite interesting. And then you leave it to settle mm -hmm. in. Does this make sense, everybody? Yeah. Um, but I hope that's helpful. Is there any questions? That's really helpful. And... Lee, what about, um, so because there is this Blue Monday, um, yeah, and um, yeah, it was so explain that again. It was a made, it was a made up as a PR stunt, isn't it? Well, so it was supposedly, a travel, travel company. yes, it was a travel company, I believe, that um, was trying to sell more holidays or something. I don't know if any of you guys know anything about this. Trying to sell more holidays, they said that the third January, third, that's right, third yeah, Monday, Monday, January. Yeah was um, the most depressing month of the year. So therefore everyone was like, oh my gosh, let's go and get a holiday. Um, everything, yes, you say makes sense, Lee, perfect. I'm so pleased. Um, I have to say, you know, I'm always very chuffed that so many of you jump on these morning lives on here. And I really appreciate you taking the time out because I know there's lots of people you can listen to, but I do hope that there's some value in um, what I'm saying. Um, let me just see if there's any more questions. Uh, yeah, great. And you can always DM me um, and DM Lisa, and we'll be back tomorrow at 8 a.m. for. Thanks so much, Lee. That was really helpful.